the golf's a unique business, and, and, and it's a different business. I managed the Apple Creek Country Club in Bismarck, North Dakota for one winter. Again, they were financially in trouble. It's always that way. And, uh, you know, and, and, and they didn't know what to do, and I, so I agreed to stay the winter and manage it for them. And they were dead broke, and I got them from out of dead broke in the winter. But it, it was just so poor management. I got the manager fired, he was such a crook. When Glassman and the guys came to me and wanted me to take over at, in an interim manager, I discussed it with Charlotte and uh, she said, whatever you think you want to do, but you might put yourself in a liability position because if they don't like you as manager, you lose both jobs. And I said, well, <laughs> I know how to manage, I've done it all my life. I said, but it's an interim thing. So, but I told him at the time, I said, I will not take the job as a house manager. That's what Tom Osborne was. He just ran the building and the pool. He had no say of green superintendent. He had no say of me. You understand, the board had, had a guy in charge of golf, a guy in charge of greens, a guy in charge of house, you understand, then he was a house manager. Mm -hmm. So we had a superintendent that was sort of independent, and my, I was sort of in the, I had a contract as an independent agent. All right, but the thing is, I told him I would not take a job as a house manager. I said, I'll take it as a general manager. And he said, well, we've never had one of those. I said, well, that's the only way you can operate and control your costs and expenditures and your monies. You can't let them do what they want to do, you understand? Uh, uh, in other words, say I, we, we have a budget for the year. A budget is a guess. Right. It's not actual dollars. So if it's really bad in the uh, first three months of the year and the finances didn't come in, we can't go spend a bunch of money right now, but even though it's on the budget. Yeah. We'll have to make do. And, well, no, not the way they did things. The golf guy would say, well, I got a budget. And go, so you start spending it and then be running out of money all the time. And we're in trouble. So I said, you can't do it that way. You got to be able to control it. The buck's got to stop someplace. And I said, it can't stop with the board of directors. The problem is you can't have a board of directors micromanaging the business. You have nine boards of directors with all different ideas. And plus that, they have three advisors. You know, they have a, an accounting advisor and a legal advisor, la, 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 you know what I mean? So we got all these voices to be heard, and none of them are in the business. Right. And so you're getting f communications that are not very clear. And when they're not very clear, the, the ship doesn't know whether they're running the rocks off, off that island in Italy or get out in the deeper water. So it usually runs into the rocks because it's, it, it's going like this, you know. It, it, and so I said, I wouldn't do it that way. Well, so they agreed that put me in as general manager. That meant I, I controlled the superintendent, what money he spent. Okay. And I controlled everything. The f everything, I controlled the money. So the problem was, I don't really want to change management. It was they, they're running out of money. They're, you know, they're broke. Why would you change management if you're flush? You know, so they want to change matches. And I said, well, I can't help you if I can't control the, how much comes in and how much goes out. You know, I've got to be able to control that or you're going to be in trouble. So anyway, they came out and they announced I was going to take over an interim basis. So they went, okay, it's an interim thing anyway, so we'll allow it. So they allowed an us general manager. Well, it didn't take very long and things started to turn a little bit because I was watching things and checking costs and things and, you know, and all these things. And, uh, well, the next thing you know, uh, uh, we, we, we didn't have any manager coming in, you know. Well, they were looking, but they're not too big a hurry right now. Well, why aren't you in a big hurry? Well, oh, things are getting better. The profit loss statements are coming. Look at this, look at this, look at this. See? So, they're pretty, so time goes on and you know, I, we did a lot of things. Pam, Pam should tell these people because she knows everything. It's like uh, you, you, you take over a big building like this. After I left, uh, they, they never cleaned it correctly. And the one thing I hate is, uh, you know, something that's dirty. And uh, we closed down for 10 days after New Year's or two weeks. Just I, all the help that want a vacation, take them now. 
and the rest of us were staying here. Pam, me, every we repainted all these rooms, yeah. cleaned up, shampooed all the carpets, took a, took apart the whole kitchen, all the grease traps, everything else, broke all the machinery down and cleaned it perfect. You know what I mean? Got it ready for a new year. If you don't shut down, you cannot do that, or you have to bring in a. a professional cleaning group that costs a lot of money to break your kitchen down in the middle of the night, which they do. The big restaurants do that, you know. They bring in, a, I'm sure the casino has professionals come in and break it down and, got and some you know, all, all the time. So, so the thing is, I shut it down and some of the board members were way against that. Well, I don't want to have to go someplace else. For I said, just for a couple of weeks in the middle of January, shouldn't hurt anybody. So, hmm. Anyway, so, the, you know, the first year went by, and we got done with the first year. When I took over, we owed a bunch of money. We were in COD with food, COD with yeah. everything. When you took over? When I took over. When I got done with the end of the year, we weren't in COD with anybody by the middle of the year. Uh, and all our bills were paid that first year. And what year did you take over? I took over in 89, January 2nd, 89. All our bills were paid, and we weren't on COD, and we had some money in the bank. Okay, so we went the next year. No, we didn't raise the dues. We didn't ask for any assessments. That's the first time it ever happened. I mean, but George Sauer had been on the board as a secretary for 17 years, and he said that's the first year he'd ever remembered that we didn't ask for a dues increase or, or an assessment, or both, always both, usually. So we didn't ask for it because we, we didn't need it. <coughs> and then the next year we got a little bit better and uh, we rebuilt the golf course. I hired uh, Mr. Wilmore, great superintendent. He's not going to be here anymore now. And we rebuilt this golf course. It was a mess. And by the spring we had a, it, it, it just come back to life, you know, real good. And he, I hired him so uh, in the fall and I wanted him to get in so he could seed it and get it growing before winter. Otherwise, we lose the whole winter, and usually that's what happened here is a lot is because normally that decision would go to the board, and then they'd think about it. And you know, by the time they make their mind up, it's December. We can't plant plant seed. You understand? So we've lost the whole growing period. And I called George Sauer, who was president at the time, and I said, George, am I general manager or not? And he says, you're general manager. And I said, fine, then you've hired a superintendent because we had a national search. We went national. We had lots of good resumes. I, the USGA came out and evaluated the course, told us uh, what the, all the problems and all that. Uh, anyway, Mark came in, he come up from Louisiana, he's from Kansas, and uh, he got that seat in the ground, broke it down and did all that, and it was just, um, just amazing what the turnaround, see. Well, that turnaround was very important because it gave the membership itself a lot of encouragement. You understand that, yeah. hey, things are changing, yeah. you know, and that was good. And uh, so that was a good thing. And Mark stayed here all these years. I hired him, you know, he's been here until now with this. Uh, new, well, I don't, uh, that's basically the ferrets, you know, they're in the golf business. They're superintendents of that. I guess they're going to manage their own uh, golf courses.